Sixteen unusual things to see in Boston. Boston is Massachusetts' largest city and serves as the capital of the New England state. It is one of the oldest cities in the United States, and as a result, has loads of historical sites you can visit. And most people do visit these places. But if you're looking to check out some stuff that you probably wouldn't have thought to look up, check out these unusual places you can visit, and maybe you'll have a much more unique Boston trip than you thought you'd have. 16. Step into the Snapple Machine. If you step into an old little deli on Clearway Street, it would look like any other corner store in a major city. But walk inside a little further, and at this particular one, you'll find an old Snapple vending machine in the back of the store. Get closer to it. You'll find you can slide that faux vending machine aside like a door and step into a clothing store called Bodega. The sleek wooden shelves provide a significant contrast to the old corner store shelves just on the other side of the wall. Inside, the trendiest streetwear line the racks and shelves of this clothing store. Most of the fashion here would be considered skate fashion and in turn attracts a lot of young shoppers looking for something casual and cool to wear. 15. The Great Molasses Flood An incident known as the Great Molasses Flood, also called the Boston Molasses Disaster, took place during the year 1919 in the famous North End neighborhood of Boston. On this day, a storage tank at the Purity Distilling Company facility had burst, sending a wave of molasses into the streets. While that might seem not like much trouble, because everyone knows how slow molasses moves, this burst caused the sticky, thick liquid to move at a speed of 35 miles per hour or 56 kilometers per hour. The wave stood at a peak of 25 feet, or 8 meters tall, and ended up killing 21 people and injuring 150 others. That was nearly 100 years ago. Though there's some people that say they can still smell the molasses on the street when the weather's hot enough. 14. The Giant Milk Bottle For those lactose intolerant out there, don't worry. That isn't really a giant bottle full of milk. The quirky structure known as the Hood Milk Bottle stands at 40 feet tall and can be found right next to the Boston Children's Museum, a cool sight to catch right before you enter the museum for the day. If it was actually filled with milk, it could hold up to 58,620 gallons of dairy. A man named Arthur Gagne built the bottle back in 1930 as a drawing point to sell ice cream next to his store. By 1943, he was would sell the bottle, though it would end up getting abandoned by the 60s. The bottle ended up in front of the Children's Museum by 1977 after dairy company HP Hood & Sons Inc. bought it and then gave it to the museum. Today, it serves as an ice cream stand. 13. The Steampunk Dream One of the more unique museums you can visit in Boston would be the Metropolitan Waterworks Museum located on Beacon Street. Since the late 1800s, the facility used to pump water into the city of Boston. However, by the 1970s, it had been replaced by a new reservoir. As a result, the facility fell into disrepair. People seemed to want to save the historic site, as a movement by the Friends of the Waterworks started in the 90s. By 2005, the state passed legislation to preserve the site and put it up for sale so that it could be renovated. Inside, you'll step into a time capsule that gives visitors a glimpse at steam-powered energy. 12. Theatrical Surgeries Most of the times in movies or television, operating theaters look sterilized and bland and really scary. However, the famous Ether Dome at the Bullfinch Building in the Massachusetts General Hospital attracts lots of tourists to this day for its famous architecture and interesting history. Doctors operated on patients here publicly since its opening in 1821 to its close in 1867. It also became the location of the first public demonstration of inhaled ether, the kind of surgical anesthetic used today. It remains as one of the oldest operating theaters in the United States. Coming here may not be your typical idea of a tourist day out, but med nerds and history buffs might appreciate the trip. 11. A Colorful Gas Tank The rainbow swash refers to the huge rainbow-colored gas tank you can see from one of Boston's highways. It is the largest copyrighted artwork in the world. The colorful eye-catching structure was painted in 1971 after Eli Goldstone, the president of the Boston Gas Company, commissioned artist Corita Kent to paint one of the tanks that can be seen from the Southeast Expressway. However, it seems not everyone has welcomed this splash of color. Some pointed out that Kent was a Vietnam War protester and that she she even included the profile of Ho Chi Minh, the Vietnamese leader, on the side of the tank. Kent denies this, but the original painting and tank were destroyed in 1992. It was recreated and this time, it was made sure no such profile could be speculated upon. 10. The Radical Bookstore 
bookworms can head to this all-volunteer, non-profit independent bookstore known as the Lucy Parsons Center. It also doubles as a community center and was founded in 1992. The center came to be after the founding of the Red Bookstore in Cambridge. The name, The Red Book, refers to the famous piece of Maoist literature, which shows exactly where an establishment like this stands. At the Lucy Parsons Center, named after an anarchist, radical labor organizer, the facility holds events such as meetings, book signings, and radical movie nights every week. 9. Gorilla Seating First, it seemed like no one knows how this dysfunctional bench found its way in the middle of the park near Jamaica Pond. One day, the bench appeared in all its U-shaped glory amongst the rest of the regular benches. Apparently, it was snuck into its current location in 2006 by Matthew Hinkman, an associate professor at the Massachusetts College of Art and Design. According to Hinkman, this is an instance of guerrilla artwork. 8. Serving sandwiches in the bathroom Admittedly, that sounds pretty disgusting, and that's kind of what took place when this Earl of Sandwich on Boston Common came to be. The octagonal cast stone structure you see here was once a men's restroom, though it had been out of use since the 1970s. The public restroom slowly decayed, said to be beyond repair. If it was any other unused, broken-down public toilet area, the city probably wouldn't have thought twice about getting rid of it. But it also happened to be one of nine historic structures on the Boston Common area. The food chain Earl of Sandwich swooped in and paid more than $1 million to renovate the restroom. And now, in its place, an Earl of Sandwich stand has opened. 7. The Secret Garden In one of the line of parks in Boston's downtown, known as the Emerald Necklace, sits a hidden little garden that dates all the way back to 1931. Opening in 1932, the garden was designed in an English style and holds over 1,500 roses that get obscured by the outside due to the tall yew hedges that surround it. Sitting rather close to the popularly visited Fenway Park, the James P. Kelleher Rose Garden, usually referred to as the Kelleher Rose Garden, has become a quiet yet beloved of an attraction in the city. 6. Madonna, Queen of the Universe This giant shrine was built in 1954 and serves as a tribute to Our Lady of Fatima. The fathers of the Don Orione Order built it so as to make a space and site that accompanied their nursing home located not far from the statue. Many religious individuals visit the shrine as it has become a gathering point to sit in peace. Known as Madonna, Queen of the Universe, the shrine features a statue of Mary standing over a globe of the world to represent how highly God anointed her. 5. The Narrowest House in Boston The aptly named Skinny House can be found on 44 Hull Street in the north end of Boston. In most big cities, space has to be compromised, which leads to a lot of narrow roads and even narrower tall buildings with not much space in between. Yet the Skinny House exists much thinner than all the other thin buildings in Boston, standing at 4 stories high and measuring to 10.4 feet or 3.16 meters at its widest. Considered the narrowest building in Boston, it was originally built as a spite house after the Civil War, where its purpose is to irritate neighbors. Only four doors exist in the house, and according to Spencer Welton, one of the owners, he says that instead of doors, they have floors between the spaces. 4. The Holiest Collection A shrine made of a collection of saint trinkets adorns this spot in the north side of Boston. Owned by Peter Baldessari, the shrine features all sorts of saint-related items and mementos. He's been collecting this sort of stuff since he was a child, and now it can be viewed on little tours Baldessari provides the public. However, the property it stands on remains private and can only be accessed if Baldessari permits it. Even if you can't get inside, you can still see a lot of the vast collection from the outside. 3. The First Italian Cafe This cafe located on Hanover Street, the location of Boston's Little Italy, was established in 1929 and has been running ever since. It is considered the first Italian cafe in the city. Cafe Vittoria has been cited as having the best cappuccino and cannoli in the city and has become a famous place for famous people to visit. The cafe has four levels, bars, and even a cigar room, the likes of which was featured on the show Haunted Collector. Apparently, employees and customers alike had been avoided avoiding the cigar room as there was talk of paranormal occurrences. The episode then revealed that the area had once been a baby farm with a violent history. Despite that haunted tidbit, it remains a popular place to eat and the food is said to be some of the best. 2. Inside a Globe At the Mary Baker Eddy Library, you'll find the Vibrant Maparium, a stained glass globe you can step inside of. The globe stands at three stories tall, a sight you can take in by walking onto a 30-foot 
or 9.1 meter long bridge that runs through the middle of it. The Meparium was built in 1935, inspired by the political maps of Rand McNally. Architect Chester Lindsay Churchill was behind the design and wanted to create something that showed the Christian Science Monitor's global awareness. It was closed temporarily in 1998 to undergo a four-year renovation project, once again opening to the public in 2002. In addition, a light show was added to visualize how the world has changed since the map's creation over 80 years ago. 1. The Holy Mackerel Also known more commonly as the Sacred Cod, this effigy of an Atlantic codfish sits hanging in the chamber of the House of Representatives at the Massachusetts State House. So why is there a 4 foot 11 inch wood carving of a fish in such an important establishment? Apparently, it's to remind the people of how important cod fishing was to the welfare of the state. And that's not some new addition either. That 80 pound fish replica has been around for over three centuries and has undergone a few iterations as the first one was lost in a fire, and the one that replaced that one disappeared during the American Revolution. The third one, however, has remained since then.